Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the blog series using Django and React. In this one, we'll get started working with the APIs. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully, you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So, let's get started. The very first thing I want you to do is open up the source code that I have provided for you. And I want you to grab all the imports over here and pretty much bring it into your own code. So, in your code, I want you to open the APIs, Views PY pretty much bringing all the imports over here okay so i don't want to have to type all this out one after the other that is why i actually just imported it like this okay and you can see over here drfyasg is showing that it couldn't be couldn't be resolved let's open up settings py so i'll open up settings we have this over here so what's the issue the only thing that we need to do firstly okay for now you know what let's just stick with writing our code and when we get to using this i will show you guys how it works so after importing this i will start off by writing my first three views so i will be writing the token obtain pair view the register view and also the profile view so these are actually very simple views let's start with the very first one so i'll create a new class and i'll call this one my token my token obtain pair view, not serializable view. And now this one should inherit from token obtain pair view. Okay, so hopefully you already know how this works. I've worked with this before. Now I have that imported over here from REST framework simple JWT views. You can see it over here. So I'm now using it down there. So after you have done that, all you simply need to do is go ahead and pass in a serializer class. And the serializer class should now be API serializer dot my token obtain pair serializer. So let me make sure that we are correctly importing this. Okay, so I think we have a naming issue over here. I I must have called this serial serializer instead of serializer. So let's change this up to Let's change this up to um, serializer, just like that. But before we do that, let me check for all the whole places where I have used this keyword, serializer. I'm clicking on this and searching for it across the whole project. So while that is searching, let's change this up to the real word that we're supposed to use, which is supposed to be serializer like this. I hope you get, I hope you understand what I'm trying to do here. So I don't think we actually have any word like that. For now, I don't think we actually have any word like that. So let's just keep going. If we encounter that issue, if we encounter that issue, then we'll have to fix it. So from API serializers, import this, which means we can now say API serializers dot my token obtain pair, which is what we wrote over here that I, I have explained in the previous tutorial. So after you've done that, that is pretty much it for that one. Now let's create another one, which will be the register view. And this one simply needs to inherit from generics.createAPIE view because we'll be sending a post request here to create a new item. And for this one, what we want to do is quite easy. We already have everything that we will be needing. So we just need to pass in the query sets that we want to interact with. So query sets should be equal to API all. okay? And also permission classes permission classes should be allow any okay and also i want to pass in the serializer class so serializer class should be api serializers dot register serializer so you might be asking why are these views very short why don't they have much functionality in them that is because we've actually done the things that we needed here in the serializer now you could do it in the serializer you could also do it from here in the view I have showed you guys how to do it from the serializer, which is this one over here. Now, as we continue in the tutorial, I will show you guys how to now perform this kind of operations here, but instead from the view over here, in case you don't want to do it in the serializers. So it's totally up to you how you want to do that after I have showed you. Now, the last view that I, I want to create here will be the profile view. So profile view, and this one should inherit from generics.retrieve updates api view and i'm using retrieve updates because i want to be able to fetch one profile and i also want to be able to update that profile for the particular user that has been fetched then over here i will go ahead and add permission classes to be 
to be allow any and also serializer class to be api serializer dot profile serializer okay now another thing that we could do is we could go ahead and instead of returning um just the i want to return the exact object of the profile so what we can do is override the default get object and this is a way to override the default get object and pass in your own informations okay so what i'm doing now is, is i'm going to say user underscore id should be equal to self dot keyword arguments and i'm going to grab user underscore id and what i simply want to do is fetch the user based on that user id by saying api models dot user dot objects dot get where id is equal to user id so after you've fetched the user now let's fetch the profile based on that user so i'll say profile should be api models dot profile the objects dot get where user is equal to the user that was fetched from the top all right now after you've done that you finally want to return profile so whenever this view is called we will return whatever profile we have searched now our just like I've mentioned before in the previous tutorials, I highly recommend that you should know a bit of Django, Python, Django REST framework, and also JavaScript and React.js before taking this course so that you can understand what um, we are doing, the simple things that we're doing, how they actually work, and not totally relying on, you know, scratch explanation because this is an intermediate course, okay? I'm going to make a beginner course for React.js where we build, where we build simple things like grocery board to do lists you know things like that very simple and when i make such tutorial i'll have to explain one by one step by step what everything does but if you're an intermediate i don't think it's i should be explaining how to actually fetch a profile or fetch a profile using the get method over here like profile object or get user is user and how to return okay so hopefully you understand what this is doing what we pretty much did over here was override the default get object. By default, if you don't pass this in and you want to fetch a profile in the URL, you will have to pass in PK as an integer, okay? So let's say the, the URL is called um, URL slash profile slash, then you have to pass in one, okay? This one is gonna be integer, integer PK. Now, what we're gonna use instead of integer PK will be what? User ID, so user underscore ID because that's what we are passing in here. You can see that is what we're passing in here. Okay, don't worry, as we continue um, working on this project in the tutorial, you'll better understand how all this works. So now that we've done that, that's everything that I wanna do. Let's go ahead and register this API and actually show how it works. So in the API app, I'll create a new file called urlspy and the urlspy I simply want to import this. You can import this over here. That's if you don't want to type it all out. You can as well type it out, okay? But I just want to import, since I already have it, you can just import from Django URLs, import path, from REST framework, simple JWT views, import token refresh, from API, import views as API views, simple. Now create a new URL patterns. And in here, what you can do is create a new path and this part, I want it to be user slash token. So if you don't want to call this token, you can still call it user slash login. And why I call the token is because whenever we're passing an email and also a password to this endpoint over here, it will return a token for us. Now for the views, it should be API views dot my token obtain pair view. Simple, we are done. Now remember to always add as view method because it's a class based view. That is the first one. The second one will be the register. So user slash register. And this should be the register view. That is it. The third one should be the token refresh. So token refresh. And over here, you just want to pass in the token refresh view. Simple as that. So guys, what this will do is actually quite simple. What it would remove the API views for the token refresh, okay? Because we're already importing it. So what the token refresh will do is, because tokens actually expire after some time, um, access tokens expire way more faster than refresh token does. 
Access token might expire every 24 hours, but refresh token might actually expire, let's say, every two weeks or every month or every three months, depending on how you set them. So whenever our access token expires, you have to use a new refresh token or an existing or activated refresh token to get another access token to continue browsing the application. So that is why we need a way to fetch new refresh token. I hope this makes sense. And after you've done that, let's also configure the profile view. And this would pretty much be profile slash then user underscore ID. And then I'm going to go ahead, save this. Now let's configure this in the main URLs PY, which is this one over here. Go ahead, import include. There you go. And you could go ahead and pass in a new path. API slash V1 slash. Then we'll go ahead and call the include. Then what do we want to include? We want to include API dot URLs PY file. Simple as that. So with this now, we are done. We are on the right path. Some things that we need to configure here will be the media URL, the media routes, and also the, the Django documentation from DRFYASG, which is using Swagger UI. Now worry, I'll show you guys how all this works. So now that we have done this, let's make sure that our server is, is still running. You could go ahead, spin up your server. So let's CD into backend, then run. You can actually, actually still activate your virtual environment by running venv backslash script backslash activate. Then run pi manage py, run server. And give this some time. As you can see, it says no module named this. Does that module actually exist in the requirements txt? I don't think so. So let's go ahead and install this module. All right. So to do that, you just need to run beep install install drf dash yesg yesg that is why the import wasn't working initially so we install this I'll give it some sec as you can see now we've successfully installed it so if you run your server again you shouldn't have that issue so give your server some time and there you go now it's working so in our views py when we uncomment this, we shouldn't have that issue again. All right, see that? So now that's reloaded, let's come over here and try visiting this page. See API V1, if we visit this slash API V1, there you go. You can now see all the endpoints over here. Can you see the user token, the user token refresh, the register, and this also. So what I will do is let's start off by visiting the user token. So come over to user token. Here you go. This is what we have. So if you want to test this out, put in an email address that exists and a password and hit post. And then you will see it returns this token for us. And if you come over to JWTIO, take this refresh token, just copy the refresh token. There you go. And paste it over here replace it with this one now can you see it's returning information about that user so see user id one full name destiny email this username this these are all the things that were passed in in the serializer when we were working with it over here see so by default it has user id jti lat iat exp but it doesn't have full name email username so this is how you add more features to the token i hope this is beginning to make sense so this is the secret pass that a user needs to have before they access the private part of the club, which in our case is the website. Now this token like this is the refresh token. It takes some time before it expires. Before it expires, it's not the same as the access token. But whenever it expires, you need a new ref a refresh token to be able to get a new access token, and that is where the refresh comes to play. So you can see that the refresh API needs a refresh token, which means we can take this refresh token here and put it in here and post. And you can see it gives us a new one, right? That's pretty much how it works. Now, the next one here is the register, which pretty much means that we could put in a full name, an email, password. Let me say testing 321 and also another one, testing 321. But if you put in a wrong password here and hit post, see, password fields didn't match. That was the 
the validation that we wrote over here. See, that's what we are getting here now. All right, I hope that makes sense. So now if you put the right password and post, you can now see, oh, it says function object is not subscriptable. That is actually nice. It's actually nice that we got this error. So let's see what's wrong. So this error over here can actually mean that we have an issue with validating the passwords. Yeah, can you see this? It's point us to this place. So now if you take a close look at this part, you can see this is called validated data. And we're trying to access password from validated data, but instead we are calling validate password, which is now making reference to this import here, which is very wrong. So we need to change this to validated data password. Okay, so now we refresh the page. Let's run this again. And this is gonna be testing tree to one. Testing tree to one, and over here to testing tree to one, and we post. This time around, can you see it's now created a new user with a full name to be Michael, or is that, is that pronounced as Michelle Hobart? And this is the email also. Now, if you log into the admin, and um, let me log in using my informations. If you come over to the user, you can now see that that new user has been created. This is them over here. So that is pretty much it. The last view over here should be the profile and we want to retrieve the first item. Can you see? Immediately it retrieves this. This is the image, the full name, the bio, the about, the date, the user ID. So guys, that is pretty much it. Everything is working as expected. In the next one, we'll get started working with the, with the profile or rather we'll start working with the core APIs, the category list API view, the post category list, the post list, the post detail, the like, the post comments, the bookmark post API. So you might be asking, when will we get started working with React.js? Now I want to follow the normal development process of working on the API firstly, then we'll work on the front end and also the integration. So for the next tutorials, we'll be working with building out the API, testing them and making sure that everything is working as expected. And if everything does, we will then get started working with the front end. That is pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you're looking to build websites faster and easier with professional components, then I highly recommend that you check out nestblog.app. It's a website or an application that provides you with modern components for Tailwind CSS, Boomer, Material, UI, Bootstrap to help streamline your development experience and efficiency. That is it. Check out nestblog.app and also consider checking out some of the courses in the description below. As one of them, I help you become a better Python, Django, and React JS developer. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, my love, peace out.